So if you've ever looked for a way to simply create a PDF as part of submitting a form automatically on a website, today's video on dynamic content for Elementor is going to do just that. Now this is a sponsored video. This is part of six for dynamic content for Elementor. And if you'd like to check out the rest of those, I'll put a link to the playlist in the description below. But anyway, let's just take a look at how we can use this plugin alongside Elementor Pro to create dynamically generated PDFs. So let's kick this off by just going over what we're going to be covering. We've created a form. This form is basically there for a quote request. Now this form will do two things. It will send an email through and it will also send a automatically generated PDF of the key information or all the information from the form. We can also add other things in there, things like dates and times it was created. We can reference lots of different things. Now, this is a kind of continuation to the video I did on working with the tokens as part of dynamic content for Elementor. So if you want to take a look at that video to get an idea of what these dynamic tags do, we're going to kind of continue on and use some of those in this tutorial as well. So they kind of work hand in hand with each other. You don't need to see the first video to follow along. So there's the form. Once we've done that, if we jump onto the media library, once this has been submitted, we get an automatically generated PDF. Now this PDF can be styled and set up how we want to, but bear in mind there are some limitations because you're generating this dynamically. It's not necessarily as flexible as if you were working with a normal PDF you designed in something like InDesign. So just bear that in mind. You want to keep it really simple and straightforward. But it is a great way of being able to have printable copies of this information automatically generated in the background. Okay, so there are two key parts to working with this process. The first is to create the form and then set that up to create the PDF. The second thing we need to do is create the template that's going to be used for the generated PDF. So we're just going to simply drop in some dynamic placeholders that are going to use those dynamic tokens from our form and also potentially from our server and some other different locations. So with that being said, let's start off by creating the page with the form. So let's just create a new page. And from there, we're just going to give this a name. and We're just going to call this new form. We'll just save this page. And once we've done that, we then open up Elementor. OK, so once Elementor is open, we've got the editor open. We're ready to start creating things. So let's just get rid of this really annoying title at the top. We'll get rid of that. And what we're going to do now is just drop in a typical Elementor Pro form. It's going to drag and drop that into our page. We'll make a little bit of space for this. Just add in a little bit of space at the top of the form just to make things look a little neater. OK, so we can put whatever kind of fields we want in here. But for now, we're just going to keep this really simple and straightforward. So let's just take off the labels. I don't want those on there. The name and the email are perfectly fine. We're going to use those as part of this form. All we're going to do is just adjust the styling on there a little bit, just so things look nice and neat and tidy. Like I say, this is purely just an aesthetic thing. OK, so let's take a look, first of all, at the different options we have inside these form elements. So what we need to do is just set up a few different parameters. We need to be sort of mindful of these because we are going to reference these as we go through things. The content is just where the normal basic information is, the type of field that we're working with, the label that's going to be associated with it, and a placeholder. Now, labels are useful, but if you're not using them, then don't worry too much about what's in there. You can dynamically generate these as well if you want to. You can set this to be required fields. So we're going to say we want the name to be required. If we come up to the advanced section, then you can see we've got three independent fields. Now, this is where we need to start putting some data in because this is important. The ID, each one of these has to be unique because we're going to reference those as part of those dynamic tokens a little later. You see then that automatically creates a short code underneath, which also references the, na the ID of name. Condition and the other option, we're going to leave those. We don't need to worry about those. So the name and the email are perfectly fine. We're going to leave those as they are. The message, however, is not what we want in there. We don't want this to be a message. We want to put this down as something like project outline. Just makes a little bit more sense to what we're talking about asking for a quote. So text area is perfectly fine. The label, we're going to change that to project outline and the same for the placeholder. We're going to set this to be required. We're going to come over to advanced and we're going to change the ID. So project underscore outline. You have to use an underscore or a dash when you're creating these IDs. And again, they have to be unique. You can't leave spaces. And I would avoid capital letters if I was you as well, just because then when you're typing these in later on, if you're going to do that as opposed to jumping back and forth, if you get into that sort of convention of always using lowercase, just makes your life just a little bit easier. So we need to create a couple more fields now. So we've created our project outline and those kinds of things. Let's add a new field in. I'm going to set this to be 
a date option. So we're going to scroll down until we find date. We're going to set that in there. The label we're going to set is the due date. So this is the date that the project would be due. So we can say due date inside there. Placeholder will do the same thing. Due date again. Required, yes. We're going to leave the minimum and maximum because we don't want to set anything inside there. We're going to come to advanced and what we're going to do is change this field ID and we're going to put due underscore date, keeping that name and convention. So we've got that option there. We're now going to drop in a couple more. So this one now is going to be left as text and we're going to set this to be telephone. So obviously we want to grab the telephone number of the person that's requesting this information. We'll set that to be 50% and we'll come to advanced and we'll change this over again, all lowercase telephone. Come back quickly into due date just to do some quick updating in there, set that to be 50% as well. So these can sit next to each other. Okay, so we're getting somewhere now. The final thing we want to put in is the project type so we know exactly what people want. So we're going to change this one this time to a select option. We're going to set the label to be project type. And again, we want to set that as we required. Now we need to put some options in underneath here. And what you can do is you can just simply put a new option per line. So again, we're going to drop those in there. If you want to allow multiple selection, you can do that. I'm going to leave this to be just one option to be selected. Again, we're going to come over to the advanced section, change this default ID, and we're just going to call this project underscore type. Oh, missed the underscore. There we go. Project underscore type. So that's our basic fields all set up. We can adjust the size and the styling and all those kinds of things on there, which we'll do a little later once I tidy things up. But that's the basic part of our form setup. We are going to drag this project outline down to the bottom so it looks a little neater. And we'll just adjust that to be a couple more sections. There we go. So we've now got our nice tidy form set up. Next thing we need to do is come down and choose the actions after submit. Now by default you've got email inside there and that's okay but there are some limitations to doing that. So we're going to get rid of that and we're going to come down first of all and we're going to just choose the option for dynamic email. Next we're going to come down and choose PDF because the nice thing with this is you can set multiple actions up to happen as part of your submit button. So you can set all these up and they will then go through and do one at a time and all these actions will fire off around the place doing what they need to be done. Each time you choose an action you'll open up a new tab underneath that allows you to configure what that action actually does. So first of all let's take a look at the PDF option. Now this might, first of all, look a little bit daunting, but don't worry about it. It's all pretty simple and straightforward once you get your head around what's actually going on. So let's just take a quick look at what this PDF option does, just to kind of clarify these different options and how they work and so on. The name is just what's going to be given to the PDF file. So you can put whatever you kind of want in there. You could leave it to be something as simple as a specific name, or you can start to tap into these different dynamic tokens. Now I'll put a link to the dynamic tokens information on the knowledge base over on the website itself for dynamic conditions for Elementor. And if we scroll down, you can see there are a lot of different types of options. You've got post user terms, options, dates, ACF fields, specific variables, and so on. And then it goes through all these different examples to sort of show you the kinds of things you can do. Now this may look a little bit overwhelming to start off with, but if I just explain how it works, it should sort of clear up what's really going on. So let's come back to this. Let's take a quick look. Let's delete this from, from here. And what we can do now is we can put in a name. So we're going to say this is a quote request. Okay, so now when this is saved out, it will save it out as a quote request. But in every single one would be called quote request. So how do we differentiate the different quote requests? How can we sort of say who this is from? Well, the easiest thing to do is to use the name that's going to be part of this form. So how will we go about doing that? It's actually a lot easier than you may think. We need to open a square bracket and we're going to use the term form because it's going to reference the form that's on this specific page. Then we're going to put a full colon and then we're going to put the name of the field, which in this example is name. Then we're going to close that square bracket and we're going to put a space in. So what we're doing is we're saying use this form that's on the page, look inside that form for the field that has the reference of name or the ID of name, and then use that as part of this file name. Simple as that. So this is where I say it's very useful and quite frankly really important to make sure you name these and they're simple and logical. So we come back to our form field, open those up, open up our name, expand that out, go to advanced, there's our ID name all in lowercase and that's exactly what we're using 
for this PDF name. That's it. It's not really that complicated, but we can do a lot more with it. And we'll take a look at that as we move forward and start to create the PDF file that's going to be sent out. But for now, just know this is the kind of basic building block that you have. You have where's the dynamic token coming from and what dynamic token do you want to use? Once you kind of get that, it's pretty simple and straightforward. So the folder is the default folder where this is going to be saved. I would leave that as it is and don't touch it because it's going to be perfectly fine. But if you wanted to, you could change that to whatever you want. Obviously, bearing in mind that it has to be a logical folder structure, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The template. Now, this is the template that's going to be used to generate the PDF. We'll come back to that in a moment. Next, you've got a couple of options for the PDF that's been generated. What page size do you want? And you can see you've got a ton of different options inside there of all different kinds of page sizes. You've got the page orientation, whether this is a landscape or a portrait. So if you had something that has a lot of information that could spread across the page, and you don't necessarily want to push that down onto new lines all the time, it might be better to put it under the landscape. Your page margin is just going to be the margin around the PDF document. So it's, I'd recommend putting something in there just to make sure it doesn't get too close to the edge of the document as it's being created. Then we've got the save option. Now, by default, this is disabled. If you leave it disabled, then no PDF will be created and saved as part of your media. So what we need to do is enable that, and that will then open up some additional options. You can see the title and the description. And again, this is using those dynamic tokens. So if we take a look, you can see it says from data by, and then we've got field name, and then we've got the date. So you can leave that if you want to. That's entirely up to you. The description is the description that can be used inside the media library. And again, if you want to leave that, you can do. But obviously, we've changed message to something else. So that now doesn't make any sense. We don't have a field ID called message. So let's just take that out of there. Let's come back up to our form fields. And let's just open those out. And then we can just say project types. We'll open that up, jump over to advanced. And there's our short code. So we're going to grab that little bit of short code so we don't have to type it in. Come back down now to our PDF down to our description, and we'll drop that in there. So now we'll have the file name auto-generated, and the description will be the project type. But you can use whatever you want. You could just simply type something in if you wanted to, and reference dynamic data again if you wanted to. So we'll come back and take a look at creating this template in a moment. What I want to do, though, is open up the dynamic email. And I'm going to explain to you now why we're using this as opposed to the normal email option that you have as part of Elementor Pro. Now, if you do that with Elementor Pro, you can send over the data that's been submitted from this form with no problem whatsoever. But what you can't do is get the PDF to be attached to that and then sent through to the recipient. This is where we have to use the dynamic email option because it opens up some additional things that we can do. So let's take a look at what we can do inside the dynamic email option. Let's add an item. And if we scroll down, we can see the different options that are set up inside here. Now, most of these are going to be pretty much exactly the same as what you'd see as part of the normal email option as part of Elemental Pro's form. But we can do a lot more inside here, and you can also stack up different things. So you can send it through to different emails and have different actions and different triggers and so on. You can even set conditions inside here. Now, we're not going to set any conditions. We don't need to do that. So we're going to leave that exactly as it is. The message, which obviously you could change that over to something a bit more sensible, and we'll just say, quote, request submission. Now, like I say, you can set that to whatever you want. Your to in email address, your from email address. Now, your from would obviously make a little bit more sense if we just change that over to the form element. And we can do that super simple. Come to our form fields. From there, we're just going to open up the email into advanced, and we're going to grab this short code. And this is the beauty of these short codes. We can just reference these all over the place inside this, and we can use those to customize everything we want. So the from email address, we're going to change that, set that to be the from email. I'm going to do the same thing underneath, and we're going to change that to name. So it's going to be dynamically generated email and from name are going to be taking the data from this form. If you want to put a reply to CC and BCC, we can do inside there. We'll leave that as it is for now. Send as, you've got two options. You can send as HTML or plain. Now, for this to work the way we want, we're going to set this up to be HTML, but it's up to you how you want to do things. We then have the option for how is this email body going to be created. You can see we're just using the message, which is this little editor down underneath, or we could use a template. So if you wanted to create a template inside uh, Elementor Pro, you could do that, and then you could reference that as part of this form. We're not going to do that in this example. We want to keep this really simple. 
So underneath you can see it says all fields and that'll pull all the data from these fields into this email. And that's perfectly fine, that's what we want. We're gonna just drop down underneath and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add one extra little bit of code in. Using this form colon PDF inside those little square brackets. Now what that's gonna do is that's going to attach the PDF to this email. So when it's sent, we'll have an attachment with the PDF. Now there are more things you can do using this kind of setup, using this kind of short code. I'll put a link in the description to the documentation. As you can see, there are a range of different options you can use. So we've got form PDF, which is what we use, which is put it everywhere in the email boy to send the PDF as an attachment. But we can also render the URL to it, the base name of the URL, the path, the ID, the title, the description. We could put a lot more information inside there. We can link this through to buttons, all those kinds of things using these dynamic tokens. So take a look at that if you want to find out a bit more. But there we go. We've basically set up all the things we need to do now inside this form. So let's update this. And the next thing we need to do is create that template that we're going to use for our PDF. So we're going to scroll back up to our PDF section. And where it says template name, we're going to click on add new. So we're going to click on there. That's going to open up the editor. Or it takes us into the templates. We're going to create a new page. And we're just going to call this quote PDF template demo. And we just set that up quick. There we go. Create our template. And once we've created our template, we're now ready to go through and set things up. So let's just get rid of everything on this page bar what we need. So we're going to set the page layout to be element or canvas. And we've got a nice clean blank page to work with. So this is where we're going to start using those different codes that I was saying about. So the first thing we're going to do is add in a heading. So we're going to drag and drop this heading to the top. We'll make a little bit of space for this and we're just going to come in and add in some padding at the top and bottom like we've done before. So we set 50 top, 50 bottom, and we'll just put a background color in there and we'll just simply set this to be a pale blue. Okay, so now with this heading section, we can align that, we can style it to make sure it stands off the page. Now, one thing I would suggest when you're creating any kind of styling for this, because you're sending it through as a PDF and there's should we say limited options available for creating the PDF, stick to system fonts. Don't use Google fonts and things. So the typography and I come into the font family and I'm going to set this to be Helvetica and I'll set it to be a weight of 400 and we'll set it to be uppercase. Okay. So we've created and styled things. We created our header. We now need to pull in and reference some data inside there. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of what it says and we're going to just say, open bracket, we're going to say form because we want to pull that data from the form and a colon and name. So this is just using exactly the same naming convention. So we've got form name. So that's going to be the person's name. And we're just going to put in here's your requested quote info, whatever you kind of want to put. It's not really important at this point, but that will reference that dynamic code. So next up, we're going to put another heading underneath. So we're going to just come back over, drag another heading underneath there. We'll set this to be much smaller. Again, we'll center align this and we'll set it to be white. And we'll just set the font again to be Helvetica. We'll set this to be 13. Actually, set it to 14. There we go. Okay, so once we've done that, we can do exactly the same thing again. But we're going to get a little bit more creative now. What we're going to do is we're going to just say requested. And then we're going to say the date that this was requested. So how do we do that? Let's go and take a look at these dynamic tokens again. If we scroll down, right the way down towards the bottom, we've got things like date. And you can see we've got a couple of examples in there. We're going to take this one, which is just the format for taking today's, for, uh, today's date. We're going to jump back over into our PDF template, and we're going to simply paste that in there. So let's take a look. It's using that similar kind of naming convention with just a slight hint of difference because we're not pulling it from a form. So what this is saying is use the dynamic information, this dynamic token, to insert the date in the following format, year, month, day. Now, in the UK, we don't work that way. So what we're going to do is we're going to put day, month, and year. Just make sure you stick to the capitalization that they've got as part of this. So we've got lowercase d for day, lowercase m for month, uppercase Y for you. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we're going to say due date, and then we're just going to do the same thing again. But this time we're going to be pulling form data. So we're going to open that those square brackets, type in form, full colon, and we need to use that particular field for due date. So we said due underscore date, 
close our brackets, all lowercase. So we're just basically putting in those kind of token holders, which is exactly the same. If you've ever used advanced custom fields or jet engine and you've used dynamic tags, this is basically doing the same kind of thing. This is just dynamic content for Elementor's way of pulling in data from forms and so on. So it's really simple, but really powerful. Okay, we're gonna do one more thing before we move on to adding the content in. We're gonna duplicate this, and this one's gonna be where we put in the telephone number and the email address of the person that sent this through. So what we're gonna do is gonna get rid of everything that's inside there, and we're just gonna put in tell, and again, same, open brackets, form, full colon, lowercase telephone, close brackets, and we'll put a space and a little slash, and we'll put in the same again. So we'll just put in email, full colon, and we'll just do the same, form, colon, email close bracket. Finally, we're just going to put in project type, the project type colon. And again, just following the same thing again, it's all just putting in a form data, project underscore type, there we go. So we've now created a custom header that has the person's name in it pulled from the form, the date, which is just pulled in from today's date, the due date, again, pulled in from the form and so on and so forth. So pretty simple and straightforward. The final thing we need to do on here is just grab a text editor, drop that underneath, make a little bit of space for this. So we're gonna just come into advanced padding and we just put 50 around all the way around it. There we go. So what we need to do now is take that out of there and we just want to put in the actual information to do with the project. So which is the project outline. So we're gonna just open that bracket up, form colon project underscore outline, close bracket, job done hit publish. That's now created our template for us. So now what we can do is we can go back into our Elementor form and we can now reference that. So let's click on the template name and we're just going to type in demo because that was part of it. And there we go. There's our quote PDF template demo. Click on that. That's our PDF template created. Now we can hit update and we're now ready to test our form out and see if our PDF is generated and everything else we need to be done is all working. Okay, so here's our form. So let's just put, fill our details out. And we'll put our due date in there. We'll set that to be there. We go. We'll just put in some telephone number information. It's going to be a website redesign. And there's our project scope. So let's just add that in there. Okay, so we'll hit send. That then will come back and tell us our form has been successfully submitted. So now we can take a look if our email has come through to where it's supposed to, if we've got our PDF attached to it, and also if our PDF is now stored as part of our media library. So there we go. There's the email that's come through to us. You can see is our quote request submissions, all the details from it. And we've also got our PDF attached. If I open up the PDF, you can see there's everything we've set up in there. The telephone, the email, the project type, the dates. All that information, if we scroll down, there's the details for the actual project itself. Close that down, come back into our media library. There's our form data submission, there's our PDF all set up, stored as part of our media library, which we can then do whatever we want to with it. Now, I for one think this is a pretty simple way of doing this kind of thing. There's a ton of different uses. This is really basic example of what you could do. You get a lot more creative with this. You can create your own templates for your emails to make things look really nice and, you know, kind of really pro the skills we've covered them now you just need to take those run with them and get a lot more creative with the kinds of things you can do with this incredibly invaluable plugin so i think you'll agree that's a pretty powerful way of using these tools together to create dynamically generated pdfs but if you want to take this combination to the next level and learn more about it take a look at these videos on screen right now they're going to take you through a ton more options to get you really really advanced websites using these tools as always, all of the applicable links for everything I've covered in this video are in the description below. My name is Paul C. This has been WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.